Hello there and welcome to another Minecraft tutorial. My name is Shadow C and today I'm going to show you a farm which is, in my opinion, the best sugarcane farm using flying machines that you can get, uh, you know, in current versions of Minecraft. This works since Minecraft 1.12, if I'm not wrong, maybe even from before. I mean, as, as long as these flying machines are working, which, by the way, this is only Java edition, this is not going to work on Bedrock, I get tons and tons of comments about Bedrock edition, I'm really sorry, I, I know there's a way to get flying machines going in Bedrock edition, but I really don't know how because I don't own the Bedrock edition to, to you know, find out. Anyways, this is Mambo Chambo's farm from Hermitcraft Season 7, and I think he did the same thing in the previous season. I cannot claim uh, which one is the author of this farm I think it, it would be a Mambo Chambos contraption but I'm not really sure uh, the first video that I've seen about uh, using fly machines for sugarcane farm was from Cap Fun I'm gonna link both videos in the description the Mambo's uh, episode in in Hermigraph and Cap Farms tutorial for sugarcane farms and of course you can watch my old tutorial which is slightly different than this I think this is a little bit better in catching all of that sugarcane so I spent like four hours watching Mambo's video where he's going like like that and saying stuff and, and rolling really fast through the farm and I'm like, what is that thing? What is he doing there? Where's that block? And then then my dispersers are not working because I was missing one single block on top of them, like the one that you see right on top of my head right now. But after a while I was able to duplicate this thing. I did one or two modifications to it. Let me go, well, what? Here, my pressing. Let me go to F5 mode. And what I did, I added these little walls right here. This is just a, a proof of concept. This is not the farm, by the way. The farm is much, much, much more, you know, longer in in that direction. But I've added these walls because I reckon we could improve a little bit of the efficiency of these farms by preventing the sugarcane from flying uh, through this spot when the flying machine pushes them, uh, you know, ahead, and also when it comes back. And that means that I had to add uh, six more hoppers, this is not the actual design, this is the actual design I'm going to present to you. The six extra hoppers that you're going to see right below the fly machine, right here. These are extra stuff that I've added aside from Mambo's farm. So, uh, you may not need them. I mean, I granted, if you are going to do like the really, really long farm as he did, you probably don't care about efficiency. If you do a decent side farm, like a normal human being would do, like maybe 80 blocks long, uh, maybe you do care about that 1% or 2% efficiency that you can gain from these walls on, on either side of the farm. Anyways, let's go and talk about the functionality of this, because this is really, really straightforward. You have a button here. This can be a clock, but remember to be able to uh, uh, power down the clock, to stop the clock so that the flying machine doesn't uh, go off while you're unloading the chunks because that can break the farm actually. And another thing that I have to say is this farm can, can go as long as you want, uh, uh, provided that the chunks are loaded. If this goes into unloaded chunks, this is not going to work. The flying machine is going to stop and it's going to probably break. So you just hit the button and yeah, the flying machine goes, does its thing, the carts down there are going to do a round trip when the machine comes back, they do the round trip again, and then we have uh, droppers just, you know, dropping all of the sugarcane from both sides of the farms, and you get those into your storage system, and uh, look at that, that's a really, really small farm, it isn't even a farm, it's a proof of concept, and I already, I think I had two stacks and a half, and look at that this is it's amazing you can you can probably get with this little thing ridiculous thing and granted there is some loss like that one that landed into the the leaves block right there is really really small when you make this thing big you are gonna get tons of sugarcane i i tell you i this is granted but before we go into materials i'm gonna tell you if you like my videos subscribe to my channels comment leave a like here that greatly helps my channels. I don't, I don't know how to speak English anymore. I haven't recorded a video in a long time. I also have an SMP with Lord Sean, my friend from Protex server. It's called Avalon Craft. You can check it out. It's really cool. I'm also working on some episodes over there. I have more tutorials on the ways and I also stream on Twitch from time to time. I don't really have a schedule, but if you follow me on Twitter and everything is right there, all of the information is right there, uh, you probably can catch uh, a few hours before I'm streamed so you can get prepared or just watch the bots after after the fact right a lot of you have asked and i prepared materials for you so it, uh, I, I did two chests here uh, let me go over this real 
quick, so you need 6 droppers for the entire thing, 43 hoppers, plus 6 hoppers that I've added in my version of the farm. So these are not present in Mambo Chambo's version. You need 8 redstone repeaters, 6 redstone comparators, 39 redstone dust, uh, hoppers and chests. This will vary depending on how big your farm is. I think Mambo did 8 rows of hoppers, so you you probably need 8 of these instead of 6. And then a row of double chests, but if your farm is really, really big, you may need to like do a wall of chests, and that is one extra hopper for each double chest that you add to the mix. So this is a very, very small um, storage for the farm, which I'm sure you're gonna need much, much more than that. You need two observers, two regular pistons, two obsidians or any unmovable blocks, uh, two pieces of glass or whatever uh, object that is not going to collide with other blocks. You need 11 slime blocks. You need two sticky pistons, Again, two observers for the flying machine. This is the flying machines, and these are the uh, return station, and one observer that needs to detect when the machine comes back. Then you need a lot of water and some packed ice for one of the waterways uh, that you can see right there at the side of the screen, where the items come back from the other end of the farm, and one button, or that can be actually a clock. And then in the second chest, because I didn't have space, you're gonna need eight mine carts with hoppers, a lot of rails, some power rails, a little bit less than the rails. You're gonna put some, you know, every so often a number of blocks. And you're gonna need blocks of redstone for the power rails to be powered. You're gonna need a lot of sand, some sugar cane. You don't really need to fill out the entire farm with sugar cane. You can do like little by little each, you know, each uh, uh, deploy of the flying machine is gonna give you more sugar cane for you to plant that farm. Structural blocks. A lot of them. I use glass for the waterways because it looks better. A lot of leaves, a lot of, you know, some sort of block and some sort of uh, slab. This is really expensive, but but you, you you might have it. And a ton of sand. That can be also dirt, uh, but it doesn't really look that well. So from these structural blocks, of which I only have uh, one stack, you'll probably need like entire shulker boxes of this if you are doing like the huge, huge industrial thing of Mambo. So it greatly depends on the size of the farm. All right, so let's start with this thing. So I'm going to recommend that you go some blocks above ground because you're gonna need to go down. Uh, presumably your storage system is gonna be a, a you know, a, a certain number of blocks uh, even to the ground. So you're gonna want to leave a space and we're gonna make a way of slabs. This can also be full blocks, you know, it doesn't really matter. This is going to determine how long your farm is gonna be. So I'm gonna do a slightly longer one than the, than, than the, the proof of concept that I've done over there because, you know, let's face it, that's not really a farm, that's a joke. So we're gonna do the real thing. I guess how how far you can go with this? I would say, I don't know. Let me back up. So this would be like the minimum. This is still really, really short. So, so let's go a little bit longer. So let's say you do this. This is a short farm, but this is going to give you a decent, decent amount of sugar cane for you to handle. And then on the sides of these things, we are going to add full blocks on each side. There you go, up to like the edge of the thing and then we do the second one right there also oh, this is going to be the length of the rail and as you can see here we have some hoppers facing down so i'm gonna put those hoppers because i want to take care of the rails next but we're going to talk about the hoppers in a second so let me grab one <coughs> from here so i'll place a hopper here this hopper should be facing down, but you're gonna, we're gonna put a block real quick here, shift click into that block, and the other hopper is going to be facing this one right here as it's done this way, and then you need another hopper facing this block, and this block is going to be replaced by the dropper. I'm not entirely sure why Mambo does this. Uh, my um, idea is that this will make this hopper drop the items down into the hopper below. But if this hopper is overflow with items, this hopper is going to try and fit items into the hopper to the side. So you will have a little bit more of bandwidth going into the dropper when the minecarts uh, come, you know, full of blocks uh, from the trip. So right, right on. So we're gonna put the stops of the carts at each side, and uh, let me quickly grab this because I forgot. 
<coughs> right here at the very end of the rail network you need two blocks of redstone and the stops in this position like so all right so and now we need to repeat this structure four more times three more times sorry <laughs> four times in total but the middle you know line of blocks is going to be shared between them so i'm gonna you know repeat this thing right here repeat the the block the full block to the side as you can see here and this you know two more times let me do it for you there you go you have this four times go all the way to the back and repeat the hopper structure that you see in here so i'll be right back and that's already looking better so we have the bottom structure for the farm here and now we can right away start working on the rail network now you're gonna have to add these blocks of redstone along the way but just so that you i give you an idea so do one line at a, at a time uh, otherwise you're gonna face problems uh, with that so this one has to be turned off and i would say one two three four five six seven eight nine maybe every ten we do this redstone blocks with the actual power rail over here so that the carts don't lose speed i would say that would be uh decent uh if you want more speed you can you know put them closer together or space them apart right so here power rail there you go that rail needs to be always powered because the car has to come back once it gets there and now here we do the other line and if you do it one by one you're not gonna have any sort of issue with the rails there you go so that should be the rail structure we can quickly test it actually we can we can grab a cart so let's say i put this car over here that i where i can push it and it goes and as you can see it gains speed it doesn't really slow down and now it's coming back well it slow it slow down uh slows down a little bit uh so i would this is this is fine for this length of the farm if you would have a longer farm you probably put this closer together maybe add another one in between uh, but this is completely fine for for what we need right now so repeat this four more times and let's get on with the next step all right looking even better so you can now uh take care of the minecart with hoppers probably is a good time we're gonna cover this entire thing up uh, in a second so this would be a good you know point in time to take care of this let's uh get the sand now and the water material so we need buckets or ice that you can break and make water with um, let's get the leaves here the sand oops and the sugar cane so with the sand now that you have the rails in place you're gonna aim at the rail let me just stand on something right here aim at the rail and drop the sand and if i'm not wrong yeah i can do it very easily and then you just you know continue adding the sand but you can always aim at the rail right at the block below and the sand is going to land right on top of it and this is really cool because it's going to allow the carts to get everything that drops on the sand which is really cool so we're gonna fill the entire structure with it and then make some waterways in between all right with the sand in place now we need to take care of the waterways so we're gonna grab the block for a second here and we need to put stops to to the the, the canals that we have built here in between so that the water doesn't flow down of course we need water inside and do the same thing on the other side of the farm and you can always decorate and build this thing any way you want i'm just you know uh, technical players used to just use the minimal amount of, of structural blocks as needed so that's why i'm com constantly like removing the block below because this is the minimum structure that you need uh, to make this work and of course on each side of the farm again for the water to stay where it needs to be we're gonna make a rail here which i think i made it no no, no i made it out of the structural uh, block anyways we have all of the waterways done we have the carts we have the rails this is 
almost starting to look like a like a completed farm. The only thing we need is the thing on top and, and the, the droppers. So we put water here. Uh, you don't really need to fill the entire thing. Uh, you can just do this, uh, or maybe even longer. But pretty much wait until the the thing stops and put another bucket. As long as there's some water in the in the canal. Uh, the sugarcane is going to grow no problem. Just make sure you don't leave any uh, dry block between the, the ways, between the sand, I guess. Because uh, that, you know, if you do that, you're not gonna have, you're gonna be able to plant the sugarcane. Let's do that side by side. That's a cool technique. And uh, then the ones in the back. And once you get this, you can actually take care of the sugarcane and plant it. Although you probably won't have enough of this for your entire farm. So you can just do, you know, whatever you can up to, you know, some whatever, you know, uh, spot that you decide. And then you, you know, you let you, you let the farm take care of the rest of the supply that you need to, to finish the plant. But since I'm in creative, I'm gonna finish this. Great, so that's all the sugarcane planted. This really <laughs> looks really cool. Uh, and now we need to take care of another very important step on this farm. So you can aim at the sugarcane and click. Uh, so you need to place all of the leaf blocks on top of the water stream. This is so that if something uh, lands in here, uh, a lot of the time the flying machine is going to be able to sweep through the leaves and these, are not, these, these leaves are not going to uh, stick to the to the slime blocks uh, so that the flying machine is going to be able to slide through here and push all of the sugar canes to the, the ends of the farm so that you're gonna get a lot more from the farm uh, than without these things. And this is the reason why I believe this farm is better than the one that I did uh, a long time ago because it really, really makes it more efficient than, than you know many of the other sugar cane farms. All right, so after you finish covering up all of the waterways, this is the shape that you should end up with. So it looks really cool already. Uh, and now we're gonna take care of a, an important uh, thing of this farm, which is a row of hoppers on each side of the farm to catch a lot of the, the sugar cane that does not uh, go down and gets uh, collected by the, the, the minecarts over there. So what I'm gonna do I'm gonna put a block here and shift click a hopper facing down because this is gonna go down probably up to this level. So let's actually do that. So I'm gonna put the block here. This is the block that should become another dispenser in here and we can just shift click. Oh, I destroyed the block. <laughs> wow. Talk about professional Minecraft player. There you go. Shift click, shift click and shift click. So you, you should have like a a, a, a row of hoppers going down. You probably don't need this. You can just do the dispenser over here. This just makes everything neater, I guess. And then shift click into that one and create the row of hoppers up to and about, I'm gonna tell you where. Up to here here there you go which is the leap uh, blocks over there so on the other side what i have is a slightly less expensive version so we have a hopper facing downwards right here shift click into that block you can remove the blocks or leave it there as a as a marker for your droppers and then just do the line of oops and make sure you don't fall line of hoppers the same as you did in the other side There you go. They all should be facing sideways so that they collect the items I, and they're gonna take them to a waterways into the side. I honestly don't know if Mambo did uh, the same thing that I did, but I reckon there's no problem in, you know, just a waterways, another dispenser over there. Shuriken comes here, makes a turn and then goes right there and joins every other stream of sugarcane. All right, we're getting closer and closer. So the next step would be make a wall over here. If you wanna catch the sugar canes that may, you know, get uh, thrown over to that way, to the other side over there, you may make a wall right here, two blocks up, uh, maybe three, I'm not entirely sure. Uh, we're gonna go five 
three, four, five. Leave a gap right here and then do the rest. Because here we're going to implement a return station. So let's put on our rest on glasses for this thing right here. I'm going to do the return station first. So let's do an observer facing this way, an immovable object right there and some structural blocks over here, this little square, and you can remove the one below the immovable object. Uh, we do two pieces of redstone, another right here, a repeater so that the pulse is a little bit longer, and a piston, regular piston facing this way. This is the one that is going to return the fly machine back over that side. All right, once we're done with this, this is really, really important. The repeater here is set to four ticks. You need to set it to the maximum thing so that this thing gets extended long enough for to, for it to be able to like bring the flying machine back. And yeah, that's really, really, really important because I just did that and the flying machine gets stuck over there and it breaks every single time if you don't do that. So as you can see, I have some shuriken, you know, standing right there waiting for it to be collected. But we're gonna go on with this and start with the flying machine itself, which is a probably the fun, funnest part of the of the project right here. So let's grab the flying machine stuff, which is this. And I'm gonna start with this side, the right side. It doesn't really matter which side, but you just have to, you know, choose one and stick with it. So I chose the right one. Put a piece of glass over there by the last uh, hopper. And then one, two, three, four, five, six. Then a block here. Sticky piston, sticky piston facing the other way. Let's do that. And remember, this doesn't work on, on Bedrock Edition, so I'm really sorry about that. One, two, three, four, five this way. And you put a glass block right here and it should align with this row of uh, leaves over here. Uh, now for it to work, you need an observer. No, there and another observer right here. So they both have to face inwards like so and on top of the of the slime blocks. There you go. And now we need a stop mechanism. In this case, you don't really have to, oh, I lost the obsidian. You don't really have uh, to, to build a return mechanism here. This just goes once, it goes over there, comes back and then it stops here. So you can handle it with a clock or, you know, a better, a, just a button so that you can, or a lever, but it just, it needs to, to generate a pulse. So uh, just a lever wouldn't do it. So I'm gonna put a block here, a regular piston, which I also lost. I had this, I swear I had it in my inventory. It just goes away all the time. So you put one here and then let me grab the button. There you go. So remember, immovable object, uh, regular pistons so that you can fire the fly machine. Button here, the longer the better. And there it goes. Now I'm trying this for the second time. You didn't see the first time, fortunately. <laughs> so this is gonna go. So look how the, how the shuriken is propelled, you know, forwards. Uh, we lost some things, I'm not sure why, but most of it gets collected by the hoppers right here. It gets sent back correctly this time, really well. And you're gonna see on the other side how we're gonna lose a lot more because we don't have the wall. Ah, we didn't lose anything <laughs> because we don't have enough sugar cane for me to show you. But believe me, uh, this is from the previous run. There's a lot of sugar cane uh, in here, so you're better off with the with the uh, leaf walls, even though they're not perfect. So right now we're gonna build the other leaf wall on this side, and we're gonna go on with the farm. All right, so now for my part of the farm, this is not Mambo's uh, contraption, so you probably should, could leave it and not do it, but I'm gonna do it because I like my farms to be uh, efficient, I guess. <laughs> so I'm gonna do a row here and go one to the back and complete it down below all the way up to this thing right here. And for this gap that you're gonna have a uh, sugarcane falling down from here, we need to do another row of hoppers. So one here facing that, that way forward and then shift click your way up to, and hopefully six. Have I counted this correctly? I think it's seven. 
<laughs> so my materials count I think is wrong. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. There, there goes my math. I'm sorry. I'm sorry, guys. Oh no, no, no! Wait, 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 wait. This is this is not a hopper. This is not a hopper. This hopper is going. So this hopper is facing. Oh man, I fell. This hopper is facing uh, to the front, and then the row. And look at that. I got one wrong here. So. Be very wary of the hoppers. They could be, you know, facing the wrong directions and just break the entire farm. We could check here. We have some sugarcane in the hopper below. That's a really good practice for you to do. And there's a, already a stack and, and a little bit more on this side over there. Anyways, that's progress. All right. So the next thing of this farm, we need to activate these cards uh, every time. We push this button and every time the flying ma machine returns. And Mambo has a really clever way of doing it by placing a, an observer facing downwards here. Actually, yeah, that's the right way. So this thing is going to observe when the flying machine leaves and comes back. And it's going to generate a rest on pulse to activate the cards over here. So let me see if I got this right. So you put a block here, uh, two blocks over here, and then you're going to complete the row right here and I a block over to this side. So I'm going to grab the redstone if I didn't lose it and the repeater. So this redstone is going to get fired. The repeater is going to lengthen the poles a little bit more. I think let me let me confirm it's one tick and then a redstone line. I think one tick is all you need. Well, let's, let's do four ticks. Why not? Just make sure those cards get delivered even if you are under lag. And now we are ready to test the, 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 the next part of the farm. It's actually four ticks, guys, so that, that was correct. So now when I press the button, the car should go, and you can see them going. They're going to collect a lot more of the sugarcane, the ones that land on the sand right here. I'm going to wait for the machine to uh, come back. The carts came back already, really cool. So they, are, they should be, yeah, and we have sugarcane here, and we have more sugarcane here. And I guess that's that's all. But when the flying machine comes back, it's going to trigger this once more. And that's two times per sweep, I guess. There you go. And, and you can see, well, we don't really have a lot of ground sure again, but as you can see, we didn't lose a single piece. Now that I got the wall, uh, you saw the cards just going again. I missed that. <laughs> and they're back. That's, that's really cool. This works as intended. So there's one thing left, or two things left, is the... Auto dispensers that needs to dispense all of the items into water streams. They are all the same contraptions, so I'm going to show you one and then do the rest of them. And then the water flows to the storage system. All right, so this is a little bit trickier than what we've done so far. But let's start for uh, with simple stuff. So let's replace all of these blocks. There was, a no, there was no blocks over there. I, I removed it, but let's, let's just put the dispensers on each of the markers. They all have to face down. They're going to speed items down into water streams. Uh, you should uh, instantly check that you, they, these are getting the sugarcane correctly. There you go. There should be sugarcane in every single hopper at the end of each line. And for a, a last one here, there you go. And now we're going to work on the auto dispense mechanism, which to be honest, I did it a bunch of times. I still don't know <laughs> exactly how it's done, but Let's begin by a three blocks over here, one block here, another block here, and then you need a block underneath that block line over there. And on the side, you need two more blocks. I think I, th I think I got this right. Yeah, I think I got it. So you go rest on comparator from this thing. You see it's outputting a signal. You go with dust and dust right there. Wait a second, I'm missing one block. There you go. This has to be power, and uh, I'm going to make a repeater here, and dust. And yeah, victory! Now we are getting all of this, we're losing all of our shuriken. So if you had shuriken already in here, make sure you, you sort of stand down here to just receive the shower. <laughs> but anyways, this, this is the auto dispenser contraption that you need to build, and you need to pretty much repeat this all the way through all of the, you know, the dispensers the droppers, sorry, throughout the contraption. So I'm gonna do that and I'll be back in a second. So I'm back here with a remark while I'm doing the second one. The good thing about having tested this farm before is that now 
each time you complete one of these systems, you can instantly check if this is gonna work or not. And as you can see, this isn't working, right? So what have I done wrong? So, well, this block is in the wrong position. So I remove that and I put the block here and there you go, it's working. So this is a really neat way of doing farm. You test each one of the steps, you know, one by one, and you make sure that your things work. That way, you know, once you finish the entire thing, you you are sure that you have a working farm. You you can just start, you know, uh, enjoying the benefits of it. So yeah, that's what I wanted to say. I thought that was really important. All right. So as you can see, I did the entire row right here, and this one is a little bit different, although it's exactly the same but the block on top of the dispenser goes like right there in the air. So I'm gonna show you how I do this. Another comparator. So there's rest on dust here, rest on dust here, rest on dust here, and a repeater, and that should start working right away. And then the last one, this one right here is, again, we don't have the, the structure, the same visuals that we have with the rest. So I'm going to do blocks right here. There's a a row of three, then one here, uh, a block there, and then here, and then you need the block on top. So I'm gonna do the comparator, redstone, let's see if I did this correctly. Um, I think there's redstone, no, redstone here, and a repeater, and there you go, that works again. Another thing you should test for is that they uh, drop the entirety of the sugarcane. So this one have all stops, so you, you control that there's nothing here because there's another version of these auto dispensers where one item is always uh, here lagging. You should have you should have them going off every single time. You should shouldn't get anything, um, you know, a lag behind in the dispensers. Right. So we have constructed the entire thing here. It looks really cool and it's so small. And it already looks cool. And we have, I don't know, I haven't counted, but from the test alone, we probably have a couple stacks. We have two over there, maybe two or three more stacks over here. This already produces something that a single player may be able to handle. So let's start with the only thing that's missing, which is the water flows. So I'm gonna be using glass for this. And the place we're gonna start is not over there because I don't really know the height I'm gonna, uh, you know, I'm gonna have to calculate. So the one place where I don't have to calculate is right here. So we're going to create a sort of waterways over here and complete this row as much as I need. There you go. Uh, let me get the, the bucket. I think I went one too many. No, there you go. You have the water here. We're safe. We don't have any rest on down there. Uh, so we're gonna go until it doesn't go any longer. So you have two options here. You can start the other, uh, you, can, you can put another water source <clears throat> down here, or you can remove this block and go one below, which I think is what Mambo does. Uh, it doesn't matter, either way is okay. I'm just gonna go one step down and continue with the structure right there. There you go. And then once you reach the end of the of the stream right here, you're gonna need to put this into hoppers. Now, there are many ways of doing this. I'm just gonna do one very, very simple way. I think, yeah, this is where the water stops. So I'm gonna just put, I don't know, let's do three hoppers. I'm gonna put a temporary block here, a chest. So these are double chests for, you know, that's slightly better. I think I did three, right? So I do the hoppers, make sure they face the chests, and I complete this. And over here, if I wanna open the chest, and this is wrong, there you go. I'm gonna have to use some sort of stairs. Uh, sadly, we don't have uh, glass stairs. <laughs> so so you may wanna change the, the block palette already by the time you reach here. But I'm just gonna do like, you know, the usual upside down stairs, let's remove this, which we don't need. And then we need to put a stop in the end so that we, we don't lose. If anything, if there's some, some overflow of items, it's better for them to be seen here. Maybe the, the hoppers can handle them. You can realize that you need to add more hoppers. So it's much, you know, you really need to stop the items from, from overflowing. And may, maybe, I don't know, hitbox issues. Maybe you need another one over there. But as you can see, our storage system is in place. I'm gonna test it 
once we uh, get this. Now we only need that water flow over there. So we're going to go from here to there, the, the other way around. And for that, we need a little bit of packed ice. So again, many ways of doing this. I'm going to use the packed ice and the slab technique. This is going to be like one way at the same level and then just one little drop because these are at the same uh, row, as you can see here. Uh, another option, you could go uh, up uh, one step at a time and once you reach a place where you cannot no longer go up you start uh, using the ice and that may be more economical but it's pretty it's maybe a little bit more complicated so i'm gonna go with the simplest way pack the ice right here put the glass here there you go and where is my slab here so grab the slab uh, break the glass and put the slab right away over there I'm gonna do I think it's eight if Minecraft hadn't changed <laughs> right so every eight blocks you put uh, one pack ties and slab this is for the items to slide over uh, you probably know this but doesn't hurt to say it and you go until the end of the farm. Right, so once you're about to reach the end, what you need to do is make a cage here because yes, items can flow, you know, all the way around. So make sure you do this, the, the little tube up to here and you have to connect it until it reaches there. There you go. Let's leave a way open, which is going to be this one, so that I can place the water and complete the glass or whatever block you choose to make this off. Right, once you reach that, it's all enclosed. Yeah, we could remove this one, actually. And let's start putting the water. And if I didn't do anything wrong, yeah, I, well, that, that is not eight. But I guess I didn't do anything wrong. Yeah, that's perfect. Now you make sure that water reaches up to the very last block and there you go we have a full water uh, waste done how do you say that in english water current water canal whatever <laughs> uh, we are, have already a little bit of growth here so we are ready for the final test here yeah yeah let's see what happens we should have a lot of sugarcane arriving uh, into the chest even though it doesn't look like much so let's just turn it on and again you can do a clock here but make sure if you do a clock, make sure you have a way of stopping the clock so that you control when you turn the, the machine on and off because you can have this going uh, if you unload the chunks. If you unload these chunks and the machine is, is working on a clock repeatedly, it's, it's bound to break, it's going to break. So you need to like uh, make sure you're good with that. And you can see the, the shuriken coming. It's really, really cool. Let's look at the chests. Well. It's something. <laughs> so, right. So, the first one is getting the most of it because we're not really stressing out the hoppers. But really, really good. I mean, it, it took me like one hour to build this. So, maybe maybe one hour and a half. Look at that. <laughs> okay. So, problem here. How do I fix this? We put some glass. There you go. And I'm going to follow up with the structure here there you go it's always good to test stuff and trying to find flaws there you go this way you don't have any loss of items and yeah one stack and a half one stack and a half so it's like uh three stacks yeah <laughs> there you go so three stacks this wasn't even fully grown it was just starting to grow maybe 20 percent down so as you can see really small farm a lot of yield this is really cool this this lead this relatively small effort and the results are awesome you, you you're gonna have paper for days until you die in minecraft of course anyways there you go that's the farm sugarcane farm with flying machines the mambo chambos design which probably was inspired in cup fun if you know of somebody who did this before Please mention it in the comments, mention the, the name of the YouTuber. I'm going to link that as well in the description. Make sure you follow for more tutorials and a good less plays and Twitch stuff and, and 
and all of that thing. Follow me on Twitter if you want to know about Twitch. Anyways, thank you for watching and take care.